After Effects can automatically track an object or individual in motion inside a video clip. And once you create that track, you can highlight that object or individual, apply an effect that follows that track, or apply an object that follows that track. So to see how this works, go to Working Files, go to After Effects Projects, and open up 1601 Tracking Motion. Now our goal here is to follow the motion of this young man. We've done it manually, but now we're going to do it automatically. We're also going to follow the motion of this surfer. So go back to Bicycles here. There are two ways to track motion in After Effects. One is called the Tracker. The other one is called Mocha. Mocha is a standalone program that comes with After Effects, and we're not going to cover Mocha in this course. It's a pretty high-level program. But let me show you how you can get to it. Just select the layer so that it's active, and go up to Animation, and then there is Track in Mocha AE. So click on that. And now here is Mocha, and it's a fairly complex, high-level program that really goes beyond the scope of this course. But if you want to dive into it, just be aware that the way it works is that you highlight a region, you follow a region in the clip, and then it tracks that region, which is very effective. It generally works better than the tracker that comes inside After Effects because the tracker just follows a point. This follows a region. Nevertheless, if you want to find out more about it, you can always go to Help here. They've got some pretty good help explaining how to use Mocha. Let's go back to After Effects. All right, so we want to automatically track this young man. And to do that, we open up the tracker. It's a panel. There are a couple ways to do that. You can change your workspace by going up here and opening up Motion Tracking. Or you can just open up the tracker by going Window, Tracker. And here it is down in the corner. Let me lift it up a little bit so you can see the whole thing there. There we go. Now when a layer is selected, you've got four options here. When I deselect the layer, you've got no options. And that may throw people off. So make sure you've got a layer selected telling the tracker what thing you want to track. Then you have four buttons here. Two of them are really just effects. And so they're here for your convenience. If you click on Track Camera, that opens up the new 3D camera tracker that comes with CS6. I'm going to turn that off and cancel the analysis. There you go. We're going to talk about this one later in the course when we start talking about 3D. Then there's the warp stabilizer. That too is an effect. I'll turn that off too. Warp stabilizer we're going to talk about later in this chapter when we talk about stabilizing motion. This is one of two ways to do that in After Effects. So I'm going to get rid of both of these guys by just deleting them from the effect controls panel. I'll go back to the project there. These other two buttons here do apply to what we want to do. Track motion is what we're going to do here. We'll do stabilize motion a little bit later. So I click on track motion. And that means that this layer now opens up inside the layer panel. And this little track point shows up in it. Those are the two things that happen when you click on that button. Down here it says track type. Are you going to transform, which is the default? Or do you want to stabilize, do parallel corner pin, perspective corner pin, or raw, just raw data? So it sets the transform by default because we just want to track motion. And then it says position is checked here. You can also check scale. If you check scale, it'll put up a second track point. So you have one track point in one place and one track point in another. We're going to skip scale now, but in the next lesson, I'm going to have done that just to show you what happens if you do scale. I'm going to uncheck that. So what I need to do now is I need to adjust the track point. I need to put it over something that will be relatively easy for After Effects to track. So let me zoom in a little bit on the screen by going Control or Command Plus. There we go. I want to track that boy's face because there's good contrast there and distinct color difference from the background, and that's easy for After Effects to track. So I need to move the tracker over there. The tracker is this two box thing with a cross in the middle. To move it around, you need to wait till you see the four arrowheads like that. If you do like this, then you're going to change the box on the outside, not the entire set. If you go inside like that, then you can move the whole set around and you get that little magnifying glass there and go to the boy's face. That works for me. The outside region is what's called the search region. You set the search region to be larger than the object you're actually going to feature here because you want it to search sort of outside the area so it's looking for the thing that you want to feature. I can move this up like that. There you go. But if I want to move this up by itself, I need to grab one of these sides like that. And if I want to move two sides at once down in the corner here, hold on the control of the command key, then I can adjust it that way as well. And typically, you have the search area just be a little bit ahead of the motion, kind of leading the motion. Then I need to open up the feature area. This is this area here, the feature region. And move that around by also clicking on one of its sides down here and pulling it down like that. There we go. And get the corner here, holding the control key. Maybe moving it around a little bit. There we go. So now I've got things pretty well set up. But there's one more little thing here. What's this little cross? This is called the attach point. Some people get confused. They think this is like the target. This is the thing that you're actually tracking. In fact, this is what you can attach an effect to if you want it to not be directly on the thing you're following. 
So I'm going to move it a little bit out of the box just to show you how that works. This is the area we're going to try to track. This is the thing we can attach an effect to later if that's how we want to do this. Now what we need to do is analyze this. So we make sure our current time indicator is at the beginning. It's not critical that it's there, but for our purposes, it's more convenient. You can always analyze backwards. It's okay, wherever you got this, you can analyze forward and backwards, but it's easier and more intuitive to go forward. So I'm gonna click on this Analyze Forward button down here in the lower right-hand corner. Click on that, and we're gonna watch and see how it does. As long as that box stays on his face, we know that After Effects is getting this right. So I'll just follow this for a while. I'll pause the recording and we'll let it go ahead a little bit. Now at this point, it's having absolutely no trouble at all. It's staying on the boy's face really well, but I'm going to press the space bar to stop it because I want to expand the feature area a little bit just in case it loses track of things. I'll expand the search region a bit too. And now I'm going to continue. You can always stop and then continue. It's perfectly all right. And it's following it just fine. Notice how the box stays over his face. Now you see the motion track there. You see that after you press the pause button or the stop button. There we go. We'll go forward some more here. I'm going to slide this over so I can see it. I do want to expand this a little bit more now. Move this to the left just a little bit like so. Make it a little bit larger like that. Press the Analyze Forward button again. There we go. It's working pretty well. Pause it for a second. Slide you over just to make sure we have got you OK. When it gets to the end, it's going to have a problem because it can't go off the side of the screen, but we can take care of that. Have it just go forward a little bit farther like that, and I'm going to affix those keyframes. Now that it's done that, it's added a whole bunch of keyframes to the bicycles layer. Just go over here and open it up. You see it's got a motion trackers property group. Open that up, it's got tracker one. That's the tracker one, the current track there. Open that up. You can see it's got a whole bunch of keyframes right there. If I press the U key, we can sort of simplify it just to see those three sets there. Now I'm going to pull this back a bit to where it was on track right there, and then it kind of fell off track. I'm going to press the plus key a couple of times. I'm going to delete these keyframes. You can see that they're the feature center, attach point, and confidence. Confidence says how confident was After Effects that it got it right. It's pretty cool. I'm going to just marquee select those guys and just delete them. And I'm going to take him forward like this to his off screen, and I'm going to move the feature center down here by just sliding it to the right, because you can't slide it off there physically up on that screen, but you can slide it off here by changing the numbers. And that's also going to change the attach point as it goes with it. So now you're going to have this one keyframe at the end, but it will continue to follow the motion as it goes off like that. All right, we've got these keyframes. Let me zoom back out a bit so you can see them all. Tons of keyframes that do absolutely nothing. You need to apply them to, let's say, another layer that might have some kind of a highlight on it that follows the motion, or to an effect that has a point that can follow things along, like a lens flare, or to, let's say, an object, like text. And we're not going to do that in this lesson. We'll do it in the next lesson. So let's go over to the surfer and do this one more time, and you can see what happens when things don't go quite so smoothly. The most obvious thing to track is the bright yellow spot on his bathing suit, but that won't go that smoothly because he kind of twists around a bit, then you get some ocean foam crashing across it, but we're going to do our best here. I'll click on the layer to make it active, and then the buttons show up here. I click on track motion again. There's the track point, kind of zoomed in now. I've got that four air-headed thing there. Drag it over to his shorts, like so. Kind of expand a little bit. Expand the feature area as well. Slide over just a touch like that. And now we're going to analyze forward. Here we go. It's doing just fine. The box is staying where it belongs, right there in the brightest area of the shorts. At some point, though, when the surfer twists around, we're probably going to lose things. Let me stop that for a moment and pull it down so I can see what's going on and zoom out a little bit. Control or Command minus. Here we go. Keep on going now. It's still sticking on there pretty well, despite all the twisting and turning. It's working pretty well. I'll pause this and fast forward. But well, we just lost the track point now. As he turned away, we lost the connection. And so when that happens, you need to back up a little bit to the point where you lost it. You want to go back where you can see the box where it belongs there. And now you need to make an adjustment so you can sort of replace the keyframes. So I'm going to zoom in a bit by going Control or Command Plus to get a better control over this and move this around a little bit more, spread out the feature area a little bit more. And now we'll continue to analyze forward and see what happens here. Now it's working great. There you go. Let me just pause it so I can see things better. There we go. It just popped off again there, so I'm going to back up a little bit more again. There we go, right there. Take it and move it back here like this. 
pull it right about there. Notice that one keyframe got pulled over. That means that that's the one we just fixed, but the one subsequent to that will also get repaired as we go forward here. There we go, it's working. Let's keep on going here. At some point, he's going to twist and he's going to go into the surf and he's going to be gone, I think. So that's pretty good. We got that pretty well done. So let's just take a look at those keyframes by going U. And that shows keyframes and there they all are. So that is probably enough. It's going to be a pretty good track for our purposes. And we can kind of put a couple of keyframes at the end there just to wrap this up manually. So that is the standard way to track motion. The next thing to do, of course, is to attach something to that motion or attach those keyframes to something. And we'll do that in the next lesson.